Get ready to kick off your week with Week Sauce. And if you enjoy this show, find more podcasts like it over at amove.tv. Happy Monday, Kyle. Happy Monday, Garrett. How you doing? I'm uh, I'm doing okay. I think <laughs> you're gonna have a bit of a, a bit of a hard pull out of a pit today. Hard pull out of a pit. Yeah, yeah. If you're planning to be like Kyle, come up here and look at all the sights. I'm in some quarry deep down, being like, no, <laughs> they look the same. I'd rather hide down here. <laughs> So I need to I need to get my uh, my Jurassic Park Jeep with the winch on the front and and uh, try try and pull you out before we get and eaten by a Dilophosaurus. And you'll be like, I don't know if that's worth fifty dollars. <laughs> you've you've uh, you've become a little cynical, sir. <laughs> Dude, E three man, oh, uh, it's got me bad. I mean, granted, I I had I had the rough video game players weekend where. You had D and D planned, and it got moved. And when D and D gets moved, there is no substitute. I'm not playing any RPG that I can just go running to. I even reinstalled The Witcher Three and was like, "Oh, that's nice, nice opener," and then quit because I'd already beaten it. You know, I don't. I I need a story, and that gameplay had its faults. You know, it's the whole not oil great. System. It's it's not great for a game that I would argue is maybe the best game ever made. The gameplay itself, minute to minute, is kind of dull. It's okay, and that's fine. I mean, it, and like I like to say around you know around the Hero League parts, nothing's ever a grind as long as you enjoy core gameplay. But it's funny how many games I do experience a grind in, and I'm getting to a story so when i think about man okay i'd really like to play that again i really enjoyed that story it's not like a movie it takes effort to go through a game and so i end up going ah okay i uh, i i did all this work in service of the story mm. was there will be dungeons moved was that what got moved yeah yeah so it got it got canceled we had a sick dm and ah. of course dms being sick that's a pretty bad idea to ride their imagination so we had to move that to the next day so I was kind of stuck in that like RPG limbo, and at the same time, E3 is going on and just showing me a lot of a lot of stuff I don't want, <laughs> and and that's fine, you know, that's fine. I mean, this is this is definitely an interesting E3 for me because I feel like I've awakened to the world of professional video gaming. I know I'm aware of the effort that a website takes to make in any aspect of this production is difficult and time consuming but it's not a lot of it's not for me and i feel like i used to be so much more excited mm, mm. yeah i'm i mean there's been a lot of, there's been a decent amount of stuff I'm, I'm stoked about the i haven't really been you know we, we've been saying leading up into this that i just really want to be surprised i haven't been surprised by anything uh the, the things that are that that i was looking forward to hearing about were like non announcements. Like uh I guess I guess let's leave with this. Let's lead with what I'm calling the barely announcing anything trend. <laughs> so Elder Scrolls Six is confirmed. Surprising nobody, and they had nothing to show. They just confirmed that it's being worked on. So they basically came out and said duh. Well I I I, I say no duh. I think this was a great announcement to make for the fans. <laughs> and, and not like not like in a throwaway way. I mean, like there is an MMO and World of Warcraft has set the standard that you do not advance the plot when you're doing an MMO. You mean you don't do a, another game that advances the plot when you have an right. MMO? The MMO of, of, of World of Warcraft has very much advanced the plot. A lot of shit has happened yeah, since for other people. Vanilla of what? What? I, I will say I will say the the Elder Scrolls. All right, Grumpy MMO. Gus, I'm fighting you. What are you talking about? No, we're not moving past that. What are you talking about? 
Uh, yeah, no, the MMO, the MMO for World, uh, for Elder Scrolls. They did a really good job being like, you did this, you beat the, you beat the boss. Not uh, imagine if you did that for World of Warcraft. Do you remember when NPCs showed up to bail you out, and then NPCs showed up to bail you out, and killed the boss before you when well, you actually beat the crap out of him from a hundred percent to one percent? World of Warcraft has been doing that for a while. <laughs> I, I know, I know. It was just a good presentation by Elder Scroll. <laughs> gotcha. It's actually what I dislike about WoW is that it's becoming more your your character is important. I'm like, no, I don't want to be important. I want to be one of of a max army food count. <laughs> like, I mean, I think the the proper move would be to move it to a guild kind of story based system rather than individual because that does f fall flat and. But also, I mean, at the same time, it it's an illusion of choice when they do the you in World of Warcraft because the main characters make all the choices. True. I mean, that, that is still the still the case. But I, I just, I don't know. I liked it more when I just felt like this thing is happening and you're just one of a lot of people trying to stop it. That's how I Fair. like my MMOs. I don't, I don't want to feel important. I want to feel just like a, 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 a random schmuck who has a bizarre set of skills. <laughs> So I like my MMO world, but, um, all right. But, and then on top of like, while we're on the Bethesda train, they also announced a new IP. It is science fiction themed. It's called Starfield. All I can tell you about it is that it has one of the best designed logos I've ever seen. And you warp or something. I mean, yeah. Space. <laughs> yeah. That was as far as it went. But that's cool. I, I, I'm in. I like this trend. You like the trend of just, yeah, we're doing this. Congratulations. Yeah, totally. Oh, totally. Fair enough. I think to... the unannounced project, the project uh, Chupacabra, and you're like, okay. And yeah, yeah, we're real busy on project Chupacabra. You know what I'm saying? Wink. And it's like, just freaking name it, bro. But do you prefer this to, like, because Blizzard's been getting away from this. We Blizzard used to, in it, like, remember the wait from Diablo 3 to launch or the wait from StarCraft 2 to launch? They announced it years in advance, and it was it was just kind of annoying. I almost wish they had just not shown us Jack until it was a year out. And and so I'm looking at stuff like Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield and wishing they had just waited another year because clearly they don't have anything that's polished enough to show. Yeah, I feel like Bethesda is big enough and has enough things in the pipeline to do this. I think Blizzard suffers from too few IPs in that way. And when they announce something, we're all just waiting on it. And in the past, too, I was way more concerned about the, what the state of a game would be in three years. Oh, what, what a horrible, like, I mean, imagine, like, you, you know, it's N64 era, PlayStation 2 era, and they say it's coming out in three years. You're like, what does a controller even like look like in three years? Are we motion? Are we in VR? Are the cars flying? And now it feels like we finally kind of things have calmed down. Graphics don't move as fast. Things don't get left uh, out to die as often. Hmm. That's interesting. I've never thought of Bethesda as having more IPs than Blizzard. Well, it's it's the new reality, right? Is it's it? The dooms and whatnot. Well, that's that's id, who's owned by Bethesda. That's like saying Call of Duty is Blizzard. Oh, now 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 you're technicalitying me. We're we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, but in that case, then I, I I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm trying to wrap my my brain around the way your brain works because it it typically confuses me. I'm I'm happy to go on. <laughs> I would like you to. About what? Uh, well, uh, my my one of my counterpoints was you you kept you kept going, but a uh, counterpoint to something earlier you said you think Bethesda's big enough to just be like, yeah, here's a logo. That's all we've got. You know who isn't big enough to do that is Battletoads, and that's exactly what they did. <laughs> sure, I mean that was very foolish, and you had to have known Battletoads. I'm. I I know Battletoads, and and. Still, I'm just like, really? You got, you got nothing? You got nothing to show here? I mean, that was, yeah, that was just. But I mean, if if you wanna if you wanna say that there were some awkward moments throughout E3, boy, we can do a whole show on that. Well, that's every E3 ever, right? Did, Woo. So what did you watch? Did you see the the Bethesda panel? Did you see that opening with the Andrew WK coming out and giving an amazing performance? The man, I love Andrew WK. I think he's a great live uh, musician, uh, and. Why do they even bother with a crowd shot during that entire bit? <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, so a horrible choice. But they did the same thing at the International I went to for Dota, and they had, what, Dead Moss come out. 
and you start rocking out and they're showing the crowd and they're like, yeah, come on, everybody. It's like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> these are all nerds. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how these decisions are made. It, for me, it has to be like party planning. Yeah. And I think of people who majored in party planning when I was in college and they were all just the most insane extroverts you've ever met. And I can see those kind of people like so. So, so you have like a you have like a, a, a party planning department and, and some sort of, you know, I don't know. Someone puts this together in some sort of vacuum and they think to themselves, what do nerds like? Surely it's like think of think of a bunch of nerds. OK, what's the one activity you're going to do? Turn to your left, turn to your right and hug them both like it's off the freaking table. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter, like, if it's a nice exercise or that it'll get everyone, you know, together or, like, it just doesn't work with nerds. And so when you ask them to dance, it doesn't work. You can't ask them to sing. Like, you force them inside their own heads. What you do is you theme the crap out of that room. You, you snow on them. You, like, immerse them inside their own heads i don't even think it's a, a nerd thing i would just i just don't think specific live music performance works out of context no live concerts work if the people that are there aren't there for that thing yeah like it doesn't, it doesn't matter who, who you throw in there like even blizzcon is kind of weird like the the standing room only area is usually feels like a concert but if you just like look around at the people sitting in the seats while Metallica's up there rocking everybody's faces off, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Odd choices. And and it's also kind of odd now that, uh, and I perfectly understandable odd, that a lot of E3 and these developer panels have become almost like job auditions. What do you mean? It's just everyone being like, hey, video game developers. You know where you wish you worked? Check out our three offices conveniently located across the globe where you could have a job. I can't say that that struck me as as a, as what I I thought they were pitching there. I it thought they were just like times. I thought they were just like, "Hey gamers, look at all the studios that will be making games. Please trust us. We're Xbox. We know we haven't been making games, but look at all the things we have making games." Fair enough. It it could right. I think it's a little bit of both. Maybe. Maybe to, to to me it was it felt like Microsoft like very much directly responding to meta overarching commentary. <laughs> sure, and and I I always like when we avoid that sort of thing. I don't like it when I'm watching a YouTube video and they're like, and before you comment, and you're like, no, just tell me. I believe I trust you. I'm not gonna comment. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> don't quantify. Just go. Just, just go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was interesting. Um, and but then for me, like the creme de la creme of announcing and then telling us nothing was Halo. Like Microsoft led with a Halo announcement and showed us no gameplay and didn't have anyone come out and tell us what it was. And then like certain Microsoft and Xbox employees were grilled by people like Jeff Keighley, and it sounds like we've gotten some some tidbits out of it but like you put up you show us this this pretty trailer you you show us the name halo infinite and i'm just like okay there's no number this must be some weird standalone thing but then from interviews it sounds like it is a direct sequel so i i'm so confused i just figured with the name infinite it was a multiplayer only service that they were going to sell for some sort of subscription or free to play model yeah apparently not oh well don't use the name infinite then. That's, that's, <laughs> our brains are trained for those sort of words. Didn't uh, Bethesda had one of those too, right? It, it was, yeah, uh, uh, oh, I almost said Diablo. Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal, yes. Yeah, Which, which is, is also like a straight up sequel. It's right? just a Not straight a up service. sequel to the, to the Doom reboot they put out. That you really yeah. enjoyed, right? You played that. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed Doom. And I that that's a big deal. Because I had to take breaks for motion sickness. <laughs> like that's... <laughs> Freaking, you know, man, you know, man, like, I mean, that's that's a problem. And that's why I'm, I'm a little salty today, too, because I haven't seen a damn computer game yet. And you know what? I just got to keep watching green lights, indie developers. That's the majority of actual one set of the keyboard games I've played in the last year. But what the butts, man? It's like it's, it's also available on mobile. It's like, I don't care. 
<laughs> oh, it's funny. I was I I kind of came away from this like a uh, pretty positive overall. Like we're we're leading with the they they announced all these things, but not really. Like there's a lot of things that we've got a name, and that's about it. Um, but but overall, I walked away pretty 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 positive. Uh, if anything, it kind of made me a bit of a toner on Blizzard. <laughs> like I'm watching this, and I'm like. Bethesda and CD Projekt Red are what I wish Blizzard was, because they're what Blizzard used to be. Interesting. They used to, the, Blizzard doesn't make big, epic, single-player games anymore, and mm. I don't think they're going to start anytime soon. They've really doubled down on the esports stuff, especially Overwatch esports, and I don't have a lot of uh, interest in that. Yeah, I, I feel you. I think it's just the pipeline they've developed... And I would be very surprised for them to step away from that, which does make me sad to think about. Uh, but why? I mean, like, uh, what was a uh, Paradox makes all these strategy games for Steam, and that's just what they do. And they, they won't stop, even if, even if you ask them. They won't stop making Crusader Kings DLCs. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I feel like, you know, much like some many of these games have figured out their pipeline, Blizzard has figured out esports works for it. And they're just going to keep on that train. Yeah, yeah. I like the byproduct because I think they finally figured out uh, World of Warcraft esports with the Mythic Dungeon Invitational. It's the most I've enjoyed watching the esport in a very long time. Um, but they're they're kind of flagship, like where the, the 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 hill they are planting their flag on. I'm just sitting here being like, not my thing, <laughs> not my thing. Which is fine because it's somebody's thing. It doesn't have to be mine, but. Um, it, it was weird. I was like, this is the first year like I came away from Bethesda being like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> rage two looks like I want to play it. What is that? I didn't, I don't give a shit about the first rage. It wasn't particularly unique, but I think we were also in an age of borderlands and everything else like it that. It did come out very close to one of the borderlands i can't even remember now but i believe it was like wedged in between one and two if i memory serves and maybe shortly after two i don't know but but borderlands was great like it was colorful and it was fun and had a lot of life and and character and then rage came out and it was just like hey do you like borderlands but you want all the fun removed from it we've got a game for you and there was also a Mad Max game in there. Yeah. Well, this is so Rage 2 is being made by the studio that made that Mad Max game. It's also yeah, the same, same studio that makes the, the um, Just Cause games, and Just Cause is just just silly. Like, I'm more excited about the next Just Just Cause than I am for Crackdown. Like, when I think of, like, just my crazy, stupid action games, like, Crackdown's been delayed so long that I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a Just Cause fan now. You waited too long. So I'm stoked for Rage 2. And, and that's just surprised me. Like, the shooting looked really tight, and the vehicle combat looks fun. And it looks like it might have a story to it as well. And maybe, maybe. Yeah. Man, it looks, it looks goofy. Like the right amount of goof. But, yeah, it was, it was strange. It was, it was weird. Like, even, like, you know me in Fallout. Like, I'm really, really on the edge. The, the most recent one... I liked, I enjoyed. Um, and so Fallout 76 is online. You can play Fallout with your friends. That piques my interest. Yeah, they were real careful to not say the words co-op during it. Uh, but it appears to be a bit more rustish, if you will, or any of our recent kind of crafting survival games. Uh, maybe Sea of Thieves isn't a horrible comparison, but you have... A group of people that you are going to party with somehow and as you sort of quest through the world it will be real time it kind of sounds like it's uh it, well, what's the what it like an instanced version of the quest area in a sense and then as you guys move through the world your world might be copy pasted into by other players of equal level so you'll be raided by real players you'll come across settlements made by real players and that's what we know. And there's nukes that you can unlock by grinding. Is there a story? Is I mean, there something to complete? There's, there's got to be, right? I mean, it's freaking Fallout. And they did say that you can play through this whole game single player, basically, if you want to. Sure. And that, and that suggests that there is something 
to do. It's not just, you know, going to no man's sky and drop you in the sandbox to play. Right, right. And, that, and this is where it piques my interest because it's because, like I said, I, like I finally kind of got on board with Fallout with the most recent uh, the most recent release. Um, and to, to play through that kind of world, any Bethesda game, I just want to play a Bethesda game with a friend. So if this is the first one, like properly through Bethesda and not through some type of mod to Skyrim or something that may or may not work. That's really all it takes for me to want to check out your game, Bethesda. And if there's a good balancing act there in a sense, whether or not it's, you know, kind of like a gear score thing that's adjusted when you join up with your friends or if they just straight up Diablo it and say, yeah, who really cares? You can be level a billion next to your level two friends. I just want to be able to play it by myself and have that reward of showing up to hang out with my friends with new toys to help us complete an actual kind of difficult and well-crafted mission. It is really tough because the previous Fallout was very see-through. It was very generated. And that was very hard for me. And I didn't enjoy the last Fallout. It's it's the illusion of choice that really upsets me when when you go through and it usually the first time it happens it's entirely accidental you're just reloading you you talk to a guy and you're like eh screw you and then you run out in the field and you died oh mine or something and you're like oh well, <laughs> and you reload you have to go talk to him again but this time you're like all right man I'll do the quest and he's like no screw you and you realize that screw you was only the real option all the other options all led back to screw you no matter what you did. You could, I mean, it's still Fallout, though. I mean, you can still, like, kill the guy and ruin any chance of going down that road. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's true. But the New Vegas was just so creative. And Fallout 3 had so many organic moments that Fallout 4 just felt staged and lifeless in comparison. And... Hmm. and I think the shadows of this are what scares me about Fallout 76. The fact that it was generated. They tried to do something a little more Diablo-esque to make the quests infinite. And that was just kind of lame because they all turned into fetch quests and something that, you know, it's easy to rag on, but sad to see in a Fallout game. I don't care about MMOs. We're MMOs. Just fetch quests me. (laughs) I'm also really bothered by the movement in a co-op game like this. There is no acceleration in a console and there's no acceleration in our characters. And I don't really I I certainly don't mind in a top down because we're all moving like jackasses. We're all strategy pieces. But when you get into third person or first person, I, I just I'm sick of seeing the guns jerk and the people strafe. Nobody strafes in real life, maybe in war. Maybe in actual tactics, but the number of times I've actually freaking grapevined my way sideways tactically are very few. <laughs> but wouldn't holding a gun and fighting for your life be a war or a tactic? Sure, sure. I, I just there's there's a disconnect in these types of games, and I. I don't think I have to go far to get you on board for saying that things in Fallout move like butts sometimes. Oh, the animation's terrible. I don't want to watch my friends moving like butts, extra butts, because they can strafe, think tactically, crouch, and all these other things that make your character look like a complete jackass. I'm going to press you here, and I hope it's more for fun and that you don't take it personally. Kyle, where, where's, where is my Kyle? Where's my Kyle that prefers his games almost looking a little more jank so that his imagination can fill in the gaps? Sure, sure. What happened that, to that man? That man loves Dungeons and & Dragons and loves uh, early access titles and indie games. Uh, that man has seen World of Warcraft and Fallout in the way it looks for years now and would like to advance the... Uh, the schedule a bit the, would like to visuals? see it's 2018 garrett mm. so, so how i feel about telltale games <laughs> sure you're doing sure. well for the love of god make it make a new <laughs> a new system that looks like it was built in the last 10 years please thank you i mean we're playing through what is it like enemy within or enemy outside or something like that the new or batman game the new batman game yeah the new Batman game. There hasn't been a new Batman game in a long time. 
Well, I mean, oh wait, the Telltale one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's it's a great advancement as far as the sort of animations and not the graphics, of course, because they love their Borderlands style, and I understand that. Because plus, don't they go mobile with them or something? So they gotta uh, be a little. I believe I can play a lot of Telltale games on my iPad. If it's on the phone, I wasn't aware, and I haven't played it that way. Maybe. Maybe. Whatever the case is, you just reminded me that I need to play these Batman games because I've heard really good things. Yeah, I mean, we're not through it yet, but it's been good, and the twists are solid, and there's a good excuse to actually have flashbacks about your parents, and so that's that's really all I ask in Batman. <laughs> we're not pointlessly flashing back. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, that's funny, because you were the one that taught me how to enjoy Fallout. And that's fine. I mean, that's like... Uh, I, I'm honestly I'm actually struggling to come up with a, a good analogy because it's such a basic concept. Can't a man grow up? Can't a man wake up one day and say, is this all there is? Is this enough for me? <laughs> I, I, I've been here. You know, I've, I've seen what this system, what Bethesda can do. I've had truly amazing moments in Oblivion, Elder Scroll games, like I want to see that envelope pushed. And right now I'm seeing more of the same, but with friends. And to me, that means they, you, you guys, y'all, really lame stories. Always. It's uh, just, hey, the number of people in this room that I'm not sure how many there are. Can you complete this quest? And you're like, I can't. And it's like, I'm glad you all agreed. <laughs> and you're like, damn it. I'm by myself. Look at me. Look me <laughs> in the eyes. You can't. Your eyes are pointing two directions. So, so you need uh, divinity levels of freedom where like, I could just run off and murder the shopkeep and you show up later and be, be like, wait, no, I was on a quest to talk to this guy. What do you mean he's dead? Right. And, and, and I'm in that third person view lacking that disconnect in the way you move because all of us NPCs move in this kind of hurry up where you clicked kind of style. It doesn't bother me in World of Warcraft either. So I think I think a lot of it comes down to the guns right now. When you put a gun in a player's hand, it just has this like, it just becomes suddenly a circus of this person aiming. Whereas in World of Warcraft, yeah, like the hunter goes, and the arcane shot is like, and like traces the boss's hand sometimes, some mostly their heads, like through the air. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's third person. You can put your guns away. Like, I guess I could help you with that, Kyle. But I don't sure. feel like fighting this hard for, for Fallout. Like, it looks janky. It has always looked janky, and it's been my key issue with the series. Yeah, well, and, and now I'm on board with you. But we were involving more people. We're declaring it, you know, that next version of it. So, yeah, I'm I'm a little disappointed. Hmm. All right. All right. I think the tech could be fun. I think it could be a blast. I and remember, like, all this is because the illusion is shattered right now. Like, I, I am all on board, but they never said what the story is. We, we're going to go to very large, empty places. It's kind of my problem with the MMO trailers, right? MMO, oh, look at all these empty places. You might stand. You might have a war in. We're not sure if you're going to go there, so we left it big and empty for you. <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm curious how the system works. And I figured we'd see more of that system at Bethesda of all places, but even they were kind of cagey about their own game. That's coming out soon. Oh, it, was, it was a solid announcement, though. Like all, I, the, the whole Bethesda conference of all of them has been my favorite so far. <laughs> Keep coming back to the Andrew WK thing. I, I wonder if they always planned for that or if it was... Oh, hey, thanks to Walmart Canada, we had to announce Rage 2 early, so we needed to figure something out to make it different than just showing the trailer you already have seen. I mean, I think it's a it's a good strategy. It's just the wrong type of music for the audience, right? Like, because Diablo works because you're not asking anything of people. When the guy just got up there and was like, everyone's like, oh! That's the Diablo theme. Like, if you got up there with some, like, you know, Johnny Cash kind of guy sitting up there and he's like, 
and the rage came down. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, I'm feeling, ooh. I'm not sure that would have helped at all. No, 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 but, but like, but Andrew WK, like, the the way they even work the camera, you know, uh, get ready to die, and everyone's like, it, they, that's a get up. Cut, that's, that's like, uh, you know, everyone, come on, dance with me, and everyone's like, no. <laughs> Needed more intercutting of the trailer that was playing on the screen, and no crowd shots. Yeah, it, it, it's that simple. Would have been fine. Would have been fine. But Would've luckily for Andrew WK, he had a lot of lights in his face, and he gave it his all. And he stuck that mic right down his crotch and played that keyboard like a champ. <laughs> yes, he did. I love Andrew WK. He needs more respect. Uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know, man. All the stuff I'm excited for, I feel like, is not your jam. Uh, I mean, you, you, you have it here at the top, the, the thing, the, the big questionable. Oh, Cyberpunk 20, uh, 2077? Yeah. 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 We we already knew it was coming because it had already been announced, but this trailer looks solid. Yeah, they certainly went through and brightened it up a bit. The old trailer was, uh, it looked like Siri and Geralt cyberpunk style as super cops or something. A <laughs> little bit, yeah, yeah. I mean, this looks, I, th- this is my aesthetic, right? Like, I really like Blade Runner. I really like Ghost in the Shell. Give me this movie, please, or this game. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see. I, it, right, like, look, 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 look at me dance, Garrett. Look, look, look at this. Look, look, look what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I've got, I've got a lot of complaints, but I'm, I'm quieter because Project Red has been trustworthy recently, and I really enjoyed them. Yeah, in their most recent project. Yeah, I, I, I want to know what, how you play through this game. Like, I'm assuming it's a third person RPG in the vein of The Witcher, but. Is it melee? Is it a shooter? Is it both? Because it's cybernetic enhancements. I'm figuring it's both, right? And yeah. I would hope that there's a sort of hold down the A button and it drives through traffic for you kind of roach business. Not that the horse worked perfectly, but there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to skip in this world that I think is doable. I would like to design my own character, even though I love Geralt in the end. I don't I wouldn't put a poster of him on my wall, but I enjoyed him. So I'm willing to accept whoever they give me. I just don't want to look like some punk. <laughs> I do want to look like some punk, but I want to look like my punk. Yeah, exactly. Like if I'm going to have a bunch of stuff in my face, here's the thing. Uh, Deus Ex guy. Totally would have designed that myself. In fact, I mean, insert sunglasses in my face. <laughs> to the surprise it, of no one. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, it could have happened. Kyle is down with the Deus Ex character. <laughs> as a custom-made character, as a guy you done give me, he looks like a jackass. An absolute jackass. And I'd say Geralt, like, no, 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 no. Let's just push it. Cat eyes, white hair. Too jackass. Like that's like like you tell your your twelve year old son to get in the barber chair, and he's like, "What what do you want for your hair? I want it all white." And can I have cat eyes? <laughs> See, I feel that way, but but for me, it's like um, that's that's Devil May Cry. Like when I think of like what is the ultimate cool, like designed by eleven year old me, uh, it's Dante. Okay, well, yeah, maybe I went too young, right? Like, because Gerald <laughs> understands all the ways of the world. G- Gerald's my character. That was Dante, but now he realizes he has to pay rent and do a job, <laughs> and so he's got it a little gruff around the edges and still has to get paid at the end of the day. But he's still a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <sighs> that's the other thing that I walked away from this E3 being realizing that I need to go back and play a lot of games I missed. I'm not up to date on Devil May Cry. Oh, is there a more up-to-date way to be? Uh, yeah, I haven't played four. And I barely remember three. So that HD collection, which I don't think includes four. I don't know how I'm going to play four because I think it's PS3 only? Or is that a PS4 game? I don't know. Whatever the case is. Um, I need to play the Devil May Cry's I missed. Because I'm five was announced and... I remember now how much I freaking love those games. Like Gears of War? Oh, yeah. Gears of War. That, too. I haven't played 4 yet. 
reminded me how much I freaking loved one through three. So four is pretty damn cheap now. So I think I'm going to go just binge that campaign real quick. I skipped Gears of War because it was the war between... Oh, right. It was the console war. And I had a PlayStation, which meant I played the one with the Russian bugs from space instead. Oh, that, oh the... Oh, God. Was that just Resistance? Resistance, yeah. It was a first-person shooter. It was the Ratchet and Clank guys, wasn't it? Was it? Maybe. I mean, it had fun guns and fun alternative fires. Wasn't Gears of War 3, though, third person for most of it or all of it? All of it. All of it, yeah. Okay. I played Resistance because my roommate had a PS3 and I hated it. Absolutely hated that game. I hated every shooter on the PS3. They couldn't figure it out for me. Um, but... It was hard. It was... I, I like the gunplay. Hmm. I guess. Can't argue with that. If you like the gunplay, you like the gunplay, right? I liked, yeah. I liked Gears because I liked the gunplay. Um, it had one of the most satisfying sniper headshots of any game I've ever played still to this day. Um... And I was really good at sneaking up on people with the chainsaw bayonet. That's right. Gears of War had fabulous core uh, uh, multiplayer, right? The, the multiplayer was surprisingly good. All, all of this, by the way, pretty much came online with two. One was very base. Uh, the jump from one to two is massive. Uh, and two is still my favorite. And that was before the Left for Dead crisis, which made all xbox multiplayer is bad is my understanding of the history there i'm not connecting any of the dots that you are plotting down hmm I'm not sure what you're referencing uh i think it was what well, left for dead had free content and somebody wasn't willing to give it out for free oh so that, yeah i think that was a microsoft thing yeah and after that all the multiplayer servers on microsoft got kind of weird but I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've researched that story. Well, one is an issue with head. DLC and charging for it, and the other is an issue with quality of multiplayer. I don't think those things are related. Yeah, I think the, 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 there was an announcement of the like a connection in order to hmm. give the online service that you desire or we have to sell the DLC. Oh, yeah, something something gotcha. along those lines. I've, I've long since forgotten the story. Gotcha. Yeah, for whatever the case, I... I the only stuff I really played multiplayer on my on the 360 back in the day was Halo, COD, Gears of War, and oddly enough, Guitar Hero. Sure. First time I ever got a perfect on an expert song was my very first multiplayer game online of Guitar Hero. Oh, you were, you know, in the zone. Yeah, I was just and like, cool. oh, I'm going to play My Name is Jonas. And I was just at the end of it, I was like, holy shit, I, I played perfect. Um, I, the reason I bring up the, the monsters is because they're making an XCOM game. They are. They are. And that was another realization that I'm pretty much down with any tactics game. I haven't played every tactics game, but every tactics game I have played, I have enjoyed. Yeah, they're nice. But I, I'm not much for the monster models, or maybe I'm supposed to like them more because of the story. They, they're just kind of blob men. Yeah, they're not particularly great. They all kind of look like, which is funny because it came first, but they all look like um, Killer Croc from the Suicide Squad movie. Yeah, or Blockbuster in this most recent Batman movie, which should just be Croc. It's, you know, it's one of those kind of things. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'll am I'm probably play it, honestly. Um, Halo Wars controls surprisingly well with a controller. So if I can rock a tactics game on my couch, I'll probably play it. Um, but I'm I'm most excited just to play more Gears of War, which is funny because I haven't played four. But it was again more an issue of time and not because I had any aversion to it. I really like Gears of War, and I think if at the time you might have liked it because freaking Bender is the main character and the voice acting is so over the top. I love it. Oh, is he doing his, uh, his southern kind of gruff yelling man? It's not southern. It's just super super gruff. Just really gruff. I heard it was Daddy Issues the game. But don't you have to find your father? That's not really a, a fair... If that that's is, the quest, find your dad. That's not fair to call it a Daddy Issues game. Yeah, that is... Like, now, that you remember, 
now that I remember, that is the key plot, but it's not... It, it doesn't get that... It's super surface level. It is a real shallow game, and it's better for it. It's fun because it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see giant muscular people killing things with chainsaws, and that's sure. that's what I get. That's sure. what I get. But, um, yeah. Uh, since it's been asked in the chat room, no, Cyber T- Cyberpunk has not gotten a release date. Uh, even though we got that that sick trailer, still no mention of when the hell it's actually coming out. No, I mean they did do some cute stuff in the trailer. Apparently, there's a lot of messages, or at least a letter inside some of the glitchy flashes between scenes, answer, answering popular questions you might have, like will there be microtransactions in which it replies, "Hell no, this is a single player game," <laughs> and things of that nature. Will there be DLC? Expect the level of blood and wine and you know, a love letter sort of to the fans in that way. And one of the questions is, when's it coming out? When it's damn ready. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, just give us like a, a window or like a projected release date. Like, hey, we're aiming for this year. <laughs> we'll let you know. I don't, I don't, I don't mind the uh, when it's damn ready. I think it's a, it's a powerful statement that has worked really well in the past, and it shows the cohesion of the group and that's what gives me the most trust because you know in in sort of my view of consuming video games the publisher is in control of that date and when they are that's when things are bad Mm. yeah no i i agree i mean i i feel like the best studios are the ones that will just keep pushing stuff or straight up cancel it yeah historically anyway anyway um but yeah I'm curious your thoughts on Division 2, because you and I played a bit of the original Division. And this one certainly has more environments, it looks like, and a bit more, what, kind of dystopian? A little bit, yeah. It's set in D.C. Which is a good location. Uh, I, I like it, too, because I'm actually familiar with the area from growing up, so the reference points are very enjoyable. It, it's more human on human action, loot, all that sort of business, an but, evolution of the Tom Clancy. Yeah, it looks like they're um, doing a little bit better job with like the armor on the villains to make it make more sense why they're taking so many damn bullets. Yeah, they're certainly thicker. Yeah. Yeah. I I find like the more I think about it, the more I'm surprised about the division, because I like it a lot. And compared to Destiny. Uh, I think it's most direct comparison. I think it's just the better game, which is weird because I love Bungie (laughs) and the shooting is better in destiny, but as an entire package, I, I, I prefer the first division. I think it may be the options given to you for tactical play in a third person mode. Mm. And a lot of this moving and cover business, while not antiquated, but certainly nothing we haven't seen before, just allows for that next level. And when you get to an MMO, Bungie is made a bullet sponge. And the same thing happened with uh, Borderlands. There's just not a lot you can do. And and Bungie even goes third person for quite a few of their moves and their melees and whatnot. And it helps out a lot. It helped out a lot in a very tight cover shooter like Mass Effect. But this range that Divinity has, or uh, Division has, allows it to just be more interesting to play. Do you find that this helps with kind of your issues that you were talking about with with the movement and Fallout? The fact that you're, it's more of a stop and pop uh, cover based combat? as opposed to a lot of just in the open strafing. Right. And, and I think that there is, there's good versions and bad versions of the melee attack, uh, deus ex awful melee attack. You press the button and there's like this big, like everything stops in the world, line up your movie shot. But doom was very fast and single player as well. I think the cover system allows you to rhythmically hit these poses that are cool. And everyone around you, because you're occupying cover so often, 
just looks good. Also, it's a it's a console game, so there's acceleration, and that helps out a lot in that kind of vision. Because when you play a computer game, you hit W and you go the full force all the time. That's never bothered me much, as much as jumping, especially in MMOs, because there's no like you think about wow, think about how you would jump in real life, and then think about how you jump in most video games. You're kind of just instantly pulled into the air, and that's reconciling with the feeling of input right press the button something happens if there was this big lag between like like squatting down and pushing off the ground it would it would feel wrong right or we'd all hold the button to squat through everything and we look ridiculous on purpose so maybe they take that away from us <laughs> <laughs> that too that too i don't think the division even had a damn jump button now that i think about it i haven't played it in a while i mean no, you're that. right the, you, looking at this trailer and the co-op and uh it doesn't have that issue, and maybe it's because when there's cover, there's no need to strafe. I mean, even Anthem looked a little strafey, clunky, multiplayer style. That bothers me less because mechs. Yeah. I guess. I and, and that's why it never bothered me in Halo, because the power armor. Uh, D- Destiny, I guess, doesn't bother me as much. But Destiny, you're, especially with the hunters and the cowls, they're a little more humanoid. They're not like fully suited up in power armor. Same thing with the Warlocks. Like, the Titans are the only ones that kind of look like they came out of Halo. And that's like, yeah, they would be out in the open just running in circles because their armor allows them to. But everyone else should be hiding. This isn't... We've made this far in this conversation, and it's not all Battle Royales, which was kind of the joke of this year. In fact, if anything, I'd say... The Division has taken hold. Mass Effect multiplayer is now the primary objective. Mass Effect multiplayer? Yeah. What what I feel like has led us to Fallout 76, The Division, uh, and now Anthem. I never connected them with Mass Effect. I mean, if anything, I guess maybe The Division, because it reminds me of Mass Effect's combat. But no one else. I think it's the the desire for a game to go beyond its single player and perhaps sell more copies. And you know, that, that that's my own personal theory, but of course you put out a co-op game, friends want people to play with and you get people who normally wouldn't purchase the game full to buy it. So including some sort of multiplayer version is very profitable. Hmm. I feel like it's a big gamble. (laughs) Because <laughs> it can and go wrong, right? The, like if, you, if a lot of them took this kind of mission structure, where it's more voiceover, like Division is, of or even Anthem appears to be, where you are receiving more generic voiceovers in your ears because the mission is uh, generated in some way, perhaps. Yeah. So of all the MMO-ish games, which one piques your interest the most? Uh, between Anthem, between Fallout 76, between a follow-up to The Division. I am very curious about Anthem. Me too. And I'm absolutely not alone in that. Uh, but I don't remember the name of the VR game that was presented so well with the Wally robot. VR game that was presented? I don't know what you're talking about. Did I miss something? Uh, I am going to search now <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Perhaps the chat will help me. Maybe. It was really, really well done. It trailered the entire game and then only revealed that it was a VR later on. But you could kind of tell it's a VR because there were there were hands and they kind of did that like slight shake at times. And it was it wasn't much. Like it was, it was pretty cool, and the gun came up, but it shook a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It, VR always has these kind of twitches. This was a Bethesda game. No, no, no. This was a, another game announced over the course of the weekend. Hmm. Oh, because the only thing that happened is Bethesda, EA, and Microsoft. First Contact. I'm. This is wonderful audio. I know. I got no. Nothing. That's not it. Yeah, I, I guess it'll remain a mystery. Yeah, I have now, no clue what you're talking about. He ripped off his own arm and, and got a better one. Somebody help me out. 
All right. Well, we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't wait. Ripped off his own arm. I got a better one. I I don't know. I'm at a loss. We'll have to figure it out. But anthem. Yeah, anthem. Uh, God, that game looks pretty. It does, I, and I think it. There was a rightful reaction from the audience of the "oh" when he started flying because I feel like there's still the a, a thing in our heads that said, "Surely you will turn cool things off when battle happens." Yeah, but apparently not. Yeah, it's it's, it's because of destiny. I'm conservative in my expectations. But Anthem had, will not have romance options. Had had Destiny not happened, I, I think I would just be unequivocally foaming at the mouth hyped for this game. It looks like there might be like a hub world that you first person in before getting into the robot Stormland. I found it. Stormland. <laughs> Stormland, E3, Stormland. 2018. It's the first I'm hearing about this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's three minutes long, but they present it as a non-VR game throughout the entire trailer. And like I said, you'll notice the shaky hands. You'll kind of get a feeling, and there was definitely a part where I'm like, this kind of looks like super hot or any of those. Is, is this a VR? And then they go, and it's a VR, and you go, well, damn, well done on your presentation. And this is... Online with friends? It appears to be. Okay. This that man, that robot looks like he's about to take you on uh, Star Tours at MGM. Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stormlight. All right. Who? Where did this even? Was this Bethesda? I guess I missed it. No, I, I found this in a content kind of pileup. Huh. Weird. Yeah, I don't know where I missed this. I had a remarkably hard time watching these streams. They kept dying out on me. They were taxed. Yeah. I had a tough time following the through line just because I'm a little heavy on the silence button. On the silence button? Yeah, so until they show pictures of what looks like a game, I'm usually muted. <laughs> and what, doing something else? No, I, I just find it really difficult to listen to a lot of it. It's... Mm. And and I hate the words. I hate the word that would be used exactly now. It starts with the C, you know. I believe it goes R next, but you know I get kind of confused. Cringy is what a lot of people say about this stuff. Oh, yeah, and, but yeah, it just goes with the territory. And I hate saying that because these are hardworking people who were probably asked and they're like, Whew, okay, yeah, I could do that for the company, sure. And they just got out of a makeup room and they're crapping themselves on stage. And you know what? Like, I don't want to put them down. I don't want to put anybody down. But I can't watch. It hurts. It, it's like watching The Office. I can't watch him do those jokes. My my soul. It dies a little. It's in pain. The, 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 like, the, the answer, the question and answer stuff for me works so much better. There's, just throw two people up there. And have somebody be the question guy and have somebody be the answer guy. Well, or just get your own rock stars, right? Like Bethesda has in its Skyrim man. And it's... Uh... Yeah. Well, even then, like, the 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 two guys up there <laughs> talking about rage. I don't understand what was up with that. It was very weird. Well, a lot of that was an unmiked crowd, too, and you could hear them barely going in the background with headphones, so they were pausing for laughs and cheers that we were not mic'd for, and who was mic'd was the one screamy lady, which, <laughs> so we hear, like, one person going, woo, the we're like, plant, lady. it's a plant. <laughs> but only one plant, which does make oh, sense. There are yeah. plants, and there's a lot more than one. <laughs> totally. You would want to get room coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the thing. That's just that's just the thing that happens. But I, I found that kind of strange. Um, some of the live uh, game demos worked for me. Like they brought, they had a lot of people on stage to play Forza, whether that was actually live gameplay or not. Who knows? But that actually for me worked really well. They did. Did he do the straddle stand? No, they were all sitting in chairs. Oh, oh, oh good. god, that made a noise. Uh, good, good. I'm yeah. glad we're sitting in chairs. Because it was always chairs. kind of funny. Like, he was a god. The guy would come out. It's usually some, like, you know, well-built guy, naturally. You're going to stand 
on stage in front of people silent for a while. You might as well have some muscles for it. Oh, that's but right. They, yeah, yeah, they yeah. They would yeah, come yeah. right out and like with their beards and, and, and they they take this like kind of wide stance with their elbows sort of out like like they were real like they were going to try to break the controller in half like a sandwich in front of them <laughs> well how else do you stand like feet together lock your knees <laughs> like... uh, well do do what we would all do in that situation which is look around to see if there's somewhere to sit no and then end up on the floor yeah just just just, just powwow just sit down yeah, cross your legs and what put one leg out because we're all old nerds now we all have bad knees you know, one knee's bad, so the, the powwow's broken. Yeah, yeah, I know. The, 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 the live Forza play worked surprisingly well for me. I thought it was, I thought they, they pulled that off really well. I, I, <laughs> I have such an interesting bias against uh, car games because, like, a, an RPG will be, like, real game footage, and I'm like, shut up, you jackass, you're lying to me. That's not real. That's just some that's just some developer footage. And then they show car and they're like real game footage. I'm like, get that off the freaking screen. I know it's real footage. No shit. It's a car game. They all of look course. they look beautiful. They always look beautiful. They always look that they're, they're like the mud graphics. I'm like, I know. I'm aware. If you, I can't I can't get wet in a game, but you know, you've got mud and car oh, snow. Good snow, you know, why not? Has I all, believe it. It has all four seasons, Kyle. And you can drive through them all. <laughs> I love Forza and I love Horizon. I'm glad it's a Horizon here. A lot of people are uh, seem to be kind of bummed out it's not a Japanese setting. Instead, they're doing England. I'm really excited for England. But that's where you go mudding, in a sense. In this this kind of racing mudding. Not like southern mudding. Well, rally rally racing? Yeah. Well, Forza has... A freaking hovercraft. <laughs> The the oh yeah they have a hovercraft in this one I don't know if you're gonna be able to actually race the hovercraft yourself or you race against it because in past horizons there have been challenges to like just outrace a train like you're not driving the train you're in a car and you have to beat the train to a point. That's cute though. So I'm curious if you're gonna if we actually get to drive hovercrafts or if we just have to beat one in a race. Huh. It looks like Top Gear the game, so I'm happy about it. I mean, these are always fun. They're not for me, but it's, this is just candy. Yeah, it's like seeing a horrifying roller coaster you refuse to ride. You're happy that they made it for people, but I'm not going on it. Fair. I can I can understand. Uh, no no hits at all there, at all. That That's totally... There's things for me and there's things for you, and I'm glad this exists. I I, I understand your, your issues with cars. Well, now they're issues. They used to just be general boredom. Now, now, now they're issues these days. <laughs> I think I mentioned on this, right? Like, um, let's say you hadn't been into uh, recently in a car accident, but before we're kind of just indifferent about cars. But I, I told you when I was talking to Ben what he what he had to say about cars, right? And why certain people are just never into them. And then one point, maybe a, 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 like a switch just get flicked and you're like, Oh, I like cars. And his thing was, yeah, I might be in the airplanes, but I can't really afford to pull that, pull that thread. <laughs> mm. No, that, that's a, that's a good point. I, I think that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And, but uh, unlike you hear the opposite on children, right? Oh, you're never ready. You, you can never afford this, <laughs> this hobby. Yeah. And yet I've heard the exact opposite from people. I have a lot of respect for who are just like, don't plan. Just you'll you'll make it work. You will figure it out. Life finds a One way. Day you you buy a muffler online, and then it's all it's all goes from there. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's me being interested in cars. It's a relative. Like it, I liked Need for Speed, and I liked the Fast and the Furious movies. That was about as far as it went. Like when I was in high school, I I didn't have car posters on the wall. It wasn't something I I kept up with. It's very recent because I'm not completely broke anymore. <laughs> like there's just a point where you're like, oh yeah, no, I kind of do. I do kind of like this, but. No frame of reference. So what's next? Uh, we still have uh, Square Enix, Ubisoft, the PC gaming show hosted by Nadine and Sony. All no notes are today. If you heard that? Oh my god! Oh god! Yeah, I was seeing his tweets. That sounds like the shittiest experience ever. Whew. For those who didn't see the story, apparently they believed his room to be vacated, though it was full of his stuff, and threw it out. Yep. Yep, including money, two hundred and fifty dollars in cash. So shoes and belt disappeared. Two hundred fifty dollars in cash disappeared. PC gaming show documents disappeared. 
I guess the shoe and belt, shoes and belt are getting recovered, and they thought the two hundred fifty dollars in cash was a tip. All right, <laughs> he's, he's he's being a champ, you know, not saying the name or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, he's more just sharing the story, which I appreciate. But yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. There is one other game that we're excited for in this household, and that would be if I haven't actually said it aloud yet. So hang on. Sekiro, Sekiro, Shadow Dies Twice. Shadow Die Twice, excuse me, it's even even less uh, elegant. Was this the one with the dude with the robot arm and a katana and the graphics look bad? Well, much like our fallouts, we are in a clunk of the ages. This is the new Dark Souls game. Oh, gotcha. Which is why everyone kind of moves like a marionette. The animation didn't bother me. It was the visuals. It looked like, again, I'm looking at, looking at this. I'm like, this looks like it was a launch game for this generation. It looks like poo. It it also suffers from that weird issue that Bioware's had for years where the hair, in between the hair, the distance fuzz doesn't work. So, like, the hair is kind of plastic, but with an aura around it. Okay. Can't say that I picked up on that. Just overall, I was like, "Wow, I I don't care for this visually." <laughs> it's I mean, it's got a clunk. There's there's one hundred. There's even the boss with like the the head thing on the uh they use them for like capturing prisoners and holding them still. That guy is one hundred percent just straight from Bloodborne. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Now I'm even less interested in it because I'm I'm not a Dark Souls guy. It's not for me. I understand the allure. I understand the the. The people that that game is made for. It is not for me. Uh, it, this would be like... Uh, think of Dark Souls like an arcade game. And there's no story unless you want it, want there to be one. If you read it on the side of the arcade machine, right? And this is them claiming for the first time ever they're going to send you home with something to play through that might have an inkling of a plot. Hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Are you excited for there being more of a plot? Yeah, I th- they're changing the aesthetic from this sort of, you know, uh, what would you even say, like Black Plague kind of time period to something more samurai, and it could be fun. Yeah, like like overly, like turned up to eleven feudal Japan. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Animusha. Oh my God, what wait, what is that? Animusha, Myth of Demons, wasn't it? Why does that sound so familiar? Oh God, I remember this. I think it was a Dreamcast game for uh, me. PlayStation 2. Yeah, I played it on Dreamcast. PlayStation 2, I yeah. I remember this game being hard as hell. It was. It was really hard. Jeez, oh my god. I haven't thought about Oni Mission in a very, very long time. I had that one French actor in it, too, for some bizarre reason. Yeah, that was the second one, I think. Uh, Oni Mission, it was like uh, Resident Evil 3, but for Samurai. Mm. And controlled just as butts except for you were now in melee for most of it so it really sucked butts gotcha have you seen the the trailer for uh uh uh, ghost of tsushima no uh so so ghost of tsushima looks to be to feudal japan what red dead was to western expanse oh interesting like it looks freaking gorgeous um We've only gotten one trailer uh, late last year. Well, not super late. October of last year, I think, is when they showed us the trailer. But um, it's looking like it's a PS4 exclusive because it's made by the same studio that did the Infamous games. Hmm. Is it Sucker Punch? I think it's Sucker Punch. I can't remember. I'm having a real hard time remembering studio names today. Oh, Um, yeah. Well, this is... uh... It doesn't appear like it's a gameplay trailer, the one I'm looking at. But yeah, this definitely looks like what I just showed you. Uh, Thursday in the crapper. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what I had in the back of my mind when when the Sekiro game was up. I'm like, this kind of over the top. And, uh, you know, I'm, I don't care if you have zero interest in being historically accurate. That's not going to be a complaint. But uh, E3 coming up reminded me that uh, Ghost of Tsushima... Uh, was announced and that I'm hoping we'll see more today at the Sony conference. And so when when Sekiro came up, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is not for me. Interesting. 
Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Sony's going to be a mixed bag, isn't it? Is it? How so? I mean, well, they've just got some weird, some weird ass stuff like baby machine Mick uh, Walking Dead there. Oh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about like, um, oh, the new Kojima game, Death, Death Stranding. Yeah. 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 So, in in things that are coming out, what in three days, right? Uh, in one day, Jurassic World Evolution re- uh, releases. Yeah, this is a creepy one. There is a overwhelmingly positive pre-review going on right now. Yeah, I've seen about ten different reviews. Uh, the worst I saw was seven out of ten. Everything else has been eight and above. Apparently, it's like from the. Reviews I've read, have not played it myself, but it's an honest to God, like Park Sim. Which is what I wanted. I want like 90s era Sim City, but dinosaurs and better graphics. Yeah, and from what I've seen here, it looks like it's decently toned and that you should be able to build where you want, which is my biggest fear in these games. I don't remember the name of the Lord of the Rings game in particular, but they made an RTS, but you could only build in the sanctioned areas allowed for each building. Oh, yeah, that always bums me out. And there's lots of games that'll do this. They'll be you claim themselves a strategy game, and then you're basically just kind of following the steps. Yeah. Yeah, research and everything, okay. And, you know, your, your park employees will sabotage. I mean, there's got to be lots of reasons for things to go wrong. And there should be in every one of these sims, you know, earthquakes and tornadoes or crime or whatever it is, as long as it's all well plotted, right? I don't hire any security, things go wrong. Cool, I'll hire security next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm curious, like, um, I haven't dug too deep on it. I'm like, is there is is employee happiness a stat? And do I have to keep it high enough so this, that this doesn't happen? Right. And what makes the employee happiness? Do I build a staff room? Do I need to? How is it managed? But, uh, you know, it's actually for a a game with this title on it. It actually doesn't look too bad. I really want to play it. I really freaking want to play it. Like, this is the kind of thing I almost want to stream. This is the kind of thing I could just, like, get lost in. Like, I, I have very little interest in streaming games. Uh, at least games that I do a show about. Because <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, I don't know, I just don't want to sit there and uh, be be micromanaged. Yeah, well, and, and something like this would be great to stream kind of on a day one thing. Oh. I love my tycoon games, certainly, but I always am fearful that someone's going to be like, no, that's not where you build that. That's that's unoptimized. And even on day one, you could face something like that in a stream. That's true. It's easier to, I guess, be like, dude, that's not why I'm playing this game. Whereas something like Heroes of Hearthstone, like, yeah, I'm trying to win. There is a correct answer. Right. Like, do you even want to win? Nah, I don't really feel like winning. Yeah. Like, who, <laughs> who has that reaction? But if I'm playing like a park builder, I'm like, no, it's just why I want to build it. Like, shut up. <laughs> It's like any, anyone who's just like, oh, why are you this this race in World of Warcraft for that class? This race is the better the better uh, uh, racial. And I'm just like, no, it's not the type of person I am. <laughs> and I will never be that person. Well, and also, you know, in this day and age, you can say, for which expansion, bro? <laughs> that too. Yeah, exactly. Like, my, my troll used to be best caster on the block. I don't know about it anymore. Yeah, I just don't. It's not how I play those games. I just like, what would look cool? That's how I play MMOs. I remember in a crowded BlizzCon room, having not played the most recent World of Warcraft, I said something along the lines of Berserk is the worst racial for a spellcaster ever. And all the troll and horde players in the room were like, take that back, you heathen. (laughs) Things change, is what you're saying. Times change. Times change, yes, indeed. Uh, But yeah, Sony should be interesting. Um, There's a lot of known quantities with Sony. Like, we, The Last of Us was already announced last year. And that's the type of game where I'm like, I don't even want to see anymore. Just get the game out. Don't show me any more of that game. I play that game for the story. And then Nintendo's on Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, they like to stand alone tomorrow. Okay. And they're going to be talking, about, I'm sure, about their Pokemans. 
Well, they just had the the Pokemon Direct, and so this will be the E3 Direct. So I I don't know. I would expect actually not too much discussion about Pokemon. But I would be happy to be wrong, because I would love for them to quickly tease a 2019 Pokemon game and then just be like, oh, by the way, it's E3. Now we're actually announcing what it is. Kingdom Hearts 3... Tomb Raider, Just Cause, and Dragon Quest 2. Looks like it's up for today. Yep. Yeah, Square Enix is up first. So it might be, it should be going right now, I think. But I like Kingdom Hearts. I'll play Kingdom Hearts 3. I'll play that. Jumping was butts. I, I'm, I haven't recovered yet from that experience. <laughs> Uh, rotating the camera in one was butts because he used freaking shoulder buttons instead of the right analog stick. Weird. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, in summation, if not yet shown, what is your favorite thing so far? Um, the thing I'm, I just know I'm going to play the most is the division sequel and it has nothing to do with E3. It has everything to do with di- the first division's impression that it made on me, which is a surprisingly solid multiplayer vague RPG on a console. Like it was it just worked. Um the the my biggest issues with it are bullet sponges on humans. And I can get past that. Like if I know I now know that going into Division 2 that's going that's just the game. And I can accept that and go and enjoy a, a really solid third person shooter RPG. Yeah, that's, that's a good answer. And I think my own curiosity for Anthem is the exact same thing. I'm willing to look past a lot of these gameplay elements to make the game work as a co-op. If the hunting and everything else, the story and all is there and it has monsters, right? Which will keep me out of, the division ultimately yes. i just didn't find the world interesting though the the increase in dystopia here with the plane crashes and the dc setting is more interesting and i think the biggest you know outside of like the anthem i think we're all bioware scared right now and we can all put that in the box in the we'll see past release kind of box nda like it's not just bioware yeah. it's ea and bioware um i i will say this like i'm going to play anthem like, there's no doubt about it. And if you're going to play Anthem, you're one of my favorite human beings to play video games with. I think one of the main reasons that I don't have a Destiny show is because you never picked up Destiny. <laughs> like, I'm straight up. Like, and there's nothing yeah. on you. And if someone out there is like, oh, I'm so mad at Kyle because I would have loved a Destiny show from you too. Don't be. He's a person and he's honest with you and he's not into the game. Um, But if, like, if you get into Anthem, holy shit, man. <laughs> like... All I need is another game that I can play with you on the regular. And and I mean, like Fallout 76, same same thing. I'm really curious about these sort of things. I really like co-op games and I really enjoy them when there's a lot to do outside of it. And even if it's not questing like Divinity 2, I had an awesome time just getting in crafting. I would turn on our server for us an hour ahead of time. We would all log in. We'd go talk around the towns, we'd go shopping, we'd do our crafting, we'd get leveled up, we'd reset our talents. And when it was time to go at two o'clock, it was time to go and we quested. And it was just so much fun. And there was a lot of clunk and the story didn't entirely make sense, but there was enough of it there to drive the people who cared about story the most like Kristen. And there was good strategy to drive me through it that made me appreciate the puzzles being presented. So if they can hit that mark with something like Fallout, I'm really, really excited about that. Rad, man. We turned it around. We found the hype. <laughs> yeah, it, it was always there. It's always there. It's just tough because well, I've, I, we've all been hurt, but I haven't recovered. And it, and a lot of that might come, as we talked about with cars, with a certain purchasing freedom. You know, I want to get into my own house right now. I have a lot of goals. I have a thing on the wall. You know what I mean? Like it's the whiteboard with all the numbers on it of the what the stuff yeah. in the house and all that. And so I look at it when I make my breakfast every day and you know I'm kind of like, ah, we're going to do it, Kyle. So I'm super defensive about like where I'm spending. And that's my own issue. And that's going to cause a lot of backlash against a lot of different games because I need to build that wall. So don't take any of this personally if I trashed on a game you love because 
honestly, I'm partially building a wall because I don't want to be sad that I don't get to play something I want. Mm. But Anthem is it. That's the big thing kind of sticking out like my money's going there. It's it's the only one that I felt like was actually, and this is such a casual, I don't like the word next gen, but it had that element. And like I said, there's a disconnect in my brain where when I see a video game that lets you fly, you can't fly and fight at the same time. And I know Destiny does this, and I know there's a lot of games where you hover and move about and have a combat setting, but the way they were moving an anthem really excited me. And it was very themed. And I lo- And Kristen was like, I'm the big guy. And I'm like, I'm the wizard dude who's floating. And we already sort of identified, like, we, there were the character archetypes I wanted to see. I saw this when Destiny was released, too. But the core gameplay just didn't work for me. Fair. That's what I was hoping out of Destiny. I just, I never, I never fell into a group. Like, I enjoyed it. I played quite a bit of the, of both Destinies, but it didn't have that, it didn't have the social aspect. The social aspect never clicked for me. It was spread across too many different platforms. I could never get everyone together in one place. Mm. didn't have Raid Night. And I know some people had that, but it, it, I couldn't find that. Yeah, and I think for me, Destiny's story didn't appeal. I didn't see it going anywhere. And I'm worried that Anthem is looking very kind of similar, very Mm. rifty, and very infinite in that way. Mm. If it's open enough or vague enough, that might even be a positive in my mind, though. Sure. If If I meant to grind the world. And if I can find that endpoint somewhere else, like hmm. uh, Elder Scrolls in uh, Skyrim, my endpoint was I became Grandmaster of the Wizard Tower. I guess I shouldn't use that, right? No, that's Grandmaster Dragon or something like that. I'm good. Grand, he wasn't I, a racist. I believe he was it just is a Grand, wizard. I believe it is Grand Wizard. <laughs> All right. Well, he was just a wizard, but he was the grandest, not a racist. <laughs> <laughs> but that game was a game that could go on forever, and I found my ending that I wanted. And I felt like I did the same with the most recent World of Warcraft expansion. I beat Karazhan. That was what I wanted to do was the five-man content, and I'm that is an end point. I'm happy. So it could be it could be a lot of different things. I think that's I think that makes a lot of sense, man. Well, Rad, I think we'll just end it here uh, before we go. Dude, where can everybody find your work? You can find me in about eight minutes over on my own channel playing some Heroes of the Storm, twitch.tv slash Kyle Ferguson. Of course, check out There Will Be Dungeons, the Dungeons and Dragons podcast on the Frog Pants Network. This last episode was fabulous. And Garrett, if I may. You'll re- I, I, this is a spoiler. Here's a spoiler for There Be Dungeons. But Garrett, you know, I, the reason why I'm so frustrated, I have an aura. I have an aura that does fire damage around me. And at the end of the game, zombies rushed in. And that's where he ended it. Tra- my first trash mob fight where I'm a barbarian that my rage literally has a fire aura around me in 10 feet radius, and he quit right as the trash mob show up. Oh. That's why I'm frustrated. I was about to Brock Samson that entire room and, while on fire. And Gora said, next time on there will next, be dungeons. <laughs> next time. <laughs> Ooh, that hurts. That hurts, man. We haven't been able to get back together for our, our uh, Star Wars RPG in a while. And I've, I've picked up some skills, Kyle. I've picked up some skills that I really want to use. And we need to make that happen. We need to make that happen. But uh, until then, uh, folks, you can follow me on Twitter at Garrett Art. Uh, there's a new episode of my solo show up. It's called R2-T2. Two R's and two T's in Garrett. That's where that came from. You can find it by searching for R2-T2 wherever podcasts can be found. I had a buddy of mine, uh, Chris, on this past week. I've never podcasted with Chris before, but I played quite a lot of PUBG with him. He introduced me to Sea of Thieves. And uh, we we did a kind of a pre E three prompter, uh, so if you go listen to it right now, you can hear how wrong we were about half uh, of what happened at E three. But uh, it's a solid episode. If you're in the E three thick of it and you're looking for more to listen to, go check out R two T two. Other than that, my uh, graphic design portfolio is over at NoMoonArt.com. I am still taking graphic design commissions, so if you need a design done, 
come hit me up. There's a contact form right there on the website, nomoonart.com. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll be back next week, uh, I guess, to talk about the fallout from the rest of E3. Until then, good luck and have fun. Take care. Good show, dude. Too bad the Bethesda conference already ran. That would have been a good pun. Oh, yeah, would have. Would have. <laughs> I heard it, and I was like, this would have been a good pun. It doesn't necessarily work, but I'm going to use it anyway. F it. You got to believe. Yeah, you do. Oh, dude, I've, 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 I'm in under the wire. I've just got El Guapo. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, well, you got till tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it was a close one. I was really worried there for a minute. Wait, hang on. What's going on here? Mid-season brawl inverted draft? What's going on? HTC All-Stars. I guess they're doing a four-fun match in oh. HTC. Yeah. Gotcha. I thought it was going to be on Alterac Valley. But oh, it looks like it's... that would be so cool. Yeah, it looks like it's just Towers of Doom or Cursed Hollow for Lame. funsies. Cool. Well, then I, I, I can stream during that. I'm going to run. Good show, man. All right, dude. Have a good one. I'm just putting my my camera lower because I want to sit. I've been standing for more than an hour now. I think I've earned earned the ability to sit. All right. Burger, 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 burger. All right. Messy hair. Figure I'll hang out with you while I post the show. Why not? Oh. Also, I'm debating if I can get uh, if I can get Katie on board. I'm wondering if uh, anyone would be interested in me streaming Jurassic World Evolution tomorrow. I was thinking Katie and I can uh, make some really shitty... Jurassic Park cosplay and uh, play that game together. I think that could be fun. I'm really excited to play that game. Happy Monday, Ka Let's see, there's the beginning. Oh, nope. I made a cut so we could get through all the weirdness. Um, copy, paste... New source. Let's see. After. Wait, nope. After show. There we go. Let's give it some space. Cool. Um, I will be right back. I'm going to cut the stream so that I can get the VOD. Don't go anywhere if you want to hang out and chat.